And hello, church. Good morning. Be blessed. All of you heard that in our church we started holding uh, retreat trainings for men. Where have you had if you know about the ma about retreat training for men? Let's uh, let's cry like me. Uh, all the men, all the men, do like I do. Cry like I I'm crying. So who were in the army i i haven't been in the army but i want we to cry as in the army uh, uh, this is the deal now i see that we have really good men let's repeat this is the voice of men i hear them i'm really happy that uh, there, are, there are many men uh, you all heard that we hold uh, retreat trainings for men and these trainings uh, became so popular that uh, even people from Russia write uh, messages to me, Baptist uh, people, Pentecostal people, all other churches write to me about these uh, retreat trainings and they ask me to um, hold these trainings for them for their men but i said that these trainings will be hold all for only men from god embassy church and uh, of course when we have already started preparation of men in these trainings um, and many men uh, started um, reproaching me that the uh, retraining for men uh, became obligatory and the training for women didn't become and um, by the way You know, we made um, training for men obligatory because uh, we said that we will not um, bless uh, couples, uh, we will not uh, get them to engagement until a man underwent uh, man, a training for men. Those who are already married also uh, came to me and asked to uh, make uh, the training for men obligatory also for those who are already married. We, ha we haven't made uh, retreat training for women obligatory because because I personally cannot imagine how I can break the women's psychology. It's very tender creature i cannot i cannot make this training for women obligatory i i want that women um went for these trainings themselves and let's listen to the testimonies of um, women who underwent the training retreat training for women and now brothers and will I? I'm sure uh, will understand that they will. Uh, they are to go to the tree training for men, and I, I'm sure that women will also understand after this testimony that they are to go to the retreat training for women. And we will also hold trainings for couples, married couples, for wives and husbands. It's later um, because we, we cannot uh, start uh, holding these trainings for married couples yet because uh, there are uh, um, little um, requests. There are not so many requests for this training. We have other kinds of virtual trainings. You can get to know about them at the, at, at the end of this whole. Um, there is a table of where retreat trainings and you can get to know about all kinds of trainings and you can sign up to any kind of training uh, which you wish to go out and so let's listen to our granny first uh, I don't want she will be standing so long don't you mind? Oh, 
our grandmother uh, is shy a little bit, that's why she asked me to read her letter. On the 12th of September this year, at 2 uh, at night, I was waiting for my husband from training for men. <coughs> You know, um, he went to the training only thanks to the obedience to Pastor Sunday. You know, we got married in uh, this church, um, finishing uh, the school for uh, those who are going to marry. But after this retreat training, my husband returned totally perfect. Do you hear this word, perfect? Imagine that it's possible. So, brothers, if you are not perfect, uh, according to the words of your wives, please go to that training, go to the training for men, and then your wife will say about you the same, you are perfect. So, sisters, sisters, if your husband or your brother underwent this training yet, then please direct them, um, make them go to that training. I can declare that my husband beca became a ready-made product in a very beautiful package. And you know, after this, I understood that I, I need to go to women retreat training too. And in 10, in 10 days, I went to the training for women. I wanted to go to the training thanks to the changes I saw in my husband. Imagine she is at the ninth month of her pregnancy. Imagine this week she's going to bear a child, and otherwise, despite of this, uh, she she went to that training for women. Imagine uh, many healthy women, or not healthy, I meant, but uh, unpregnant, I meant. I mean, unpregnant men and women are afraid of going to the kinds of future trainings. But she is on the ninth month of her pregnancy and she's not afraid of, she wasn't afraid of going to that training to see if she was able to undergo this training. It's, it's nothing for those who are not pregnant. So I imagine th that she went to the training um, uh, 10 days before her pregnant, uh, her uh, conceit and uh, she became the best pupil at the training. At this training I understood about uh, everything about physiology of man. I started to understand men better. I understood my psychology and now we, we don't conflict at all. And, and because I got to know about all the things that can become uh, the corn of conflict in our family. Thanks God for the wisdom. Mm, and I cannot imagine how I could live without this knowledge before. I left my parental house uh, uh, without this knowledge. And if I could know this knowledge before, I could help my grannies and my parents and we could have perfect family. So dear women, if you're married or not, men, grandfathers, husbands, you can self-establish in your life. You can get to know about your purpose, about your mission on this earth through these trainings. You can get to all knowledge you need for your life in uh, these trainings. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, dear. My name is Eugen. Help her, please. Help her, please, and uh, hold her with two hands. Uh, I don't want she will concede here, right here. I, w I don't want she will bury her child right now and here. We are married for 10 years already, and we're in the church for six years. And uh, uh, frankly speaking, I didn't want to go to the training for women at all. Uh, you know, I, I had to go to the training um, to the classical training, but I didn't want to go to the women training. I didn't want to know the truth about myself. I, I, I am administrator, I'm a good leader, I'm an assistant of pastor in all roles as a woman. 
uh, I understood that I'm not perfect at all. I knew that um, I am not perfect and I w was afraid of knowing this truth about myself. And uh, thanks to my husband, he, thanks to his motivation, he supported me. I And thanks to him, I went to this training for women. And so husbands, uh, make your women go to the training for women. And these three days uh, changed my life and I understood the truth releases people and the uh, weapon of devil is um, is illiteracy and you know um, um, when we attended the school for engaged uh, couples I got to know many things but uh, the truths that which I got on this training made me free from many addictions from many many things I didn't know before and I, I think that I'm now normal and thanks to this knowledge I I've got delivered and I thanks to and I thank to God that he gave me the truth which made me free and I now see my husband by other eyes now I understand the things I, I see in him is not a sin anymore uh, many women think that to see their husbands in some way is a sin, but um, uh, it's not a sin at all. And I want to appeal to wives, um, you know, if you have conflicts or if you have some problems in your families, it means that you don't know something. And women who are not married yet also go to the training for women. Because if you're not married yet, it means that you don't know something. And I thank, I thank Pastor, I appreciate Pastor that um, he created a unique form of trainings. Be, uh, the first day of training was uh, full with tears. We were are crying all day around. And uh, uh, second day, we saw a father uh, who were ready to listen to any of women, and we cried out of all our problems. And after this training, we were delivered. We we got freedom, thanks to seminars. We also got to know about many uh, issues. Uh, Pastor, thank you that you teach about uh, us about this. I'm really happy that I'm in this very church. Thank you that you help us to establish as a wife, woman, and lady. <laughs> Hello, dear church. My name is Tonya. I'm from European city of Ukraine. We, um, with my husband, came to the church six years ago the, on the 2nd of October. And in a year, uh, uh, sharply, uh, uh, a child was born. So it was one year when uh, a new child was born in our family. Everything was okay in our family, but there were some troubles sometimes. And thanks God, my husband attended uh, training for men. And when I saw changes in my husband, I understood I, I am to go to the women training, women retreat training. I also wanted to know all the knowledge I can get uh, to change myself and to change um, the situations in our family. The training for women is the place where I met myself, where I got to know more about my God, where I became more happy. And everything I got in training, I understood that I'm the daughter of the Lord and I, I have no right to decrease the level of the queen and um, God made me queen. I, I have no the right to, to be less than a queen. I want you all attended this training because everything you read in books, everything you read on internet is nothing comparing with the knowledge you get at this training. You know, before I had uh, some troubles with my husband 
and you know it's normal uh, that you have troubles just because you don't know some truths and uh, the conflicts appear only because you don't know his physiology you, you cannot understand his uh, shape of thinking after this training I started to accept uh, my husband as he is and I don't want I don't want to change him now I want to change myself now I, I accept him as he is he, he became so precious in my life he's the the treasure in my eyes now uh, man applaud to her please uh, after this training I went to the private room to strengthen the knowledge I got and consciously I agreed with God that I must become an assistant to my husband not a ruler not a director of my husband but I must become an assistant of him this is the main uh, revelation I have got in that private room I'm the daughter of a king and and my helper my assistant in everything is the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit will help me to become um, a woman a queen um, whom God wants me to be thank thank you speakers I'm very appreciate the speakers uh, who gave us also much knowledge. I'm shocked that uh, there were more women from Russia, but not from Ukraine. I I'm crying because uh, imagine people from Russia value more the truths which we can uh, get living in Ukraine. So this is uh, the uh, wedding holiday to which um, the Lord invites you. Don't miss this chance to attend it. Your mothers, your spiritual uh, fathers and mothers are waiting for you to make you happy. Don't miss this chance. We must value, must treasure the things which around us here in Ukraine. Many people come from abroad paying uh, huge prices uh, for 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 trips, for apartments. To get the truth, we get we can get here for free. Thank you very much. Hello, dear church, my name is Anne. Um, in fact, this retreat training also shocked me. Uh, when I was going there, I, I thought that it will be a, a very difficult retreat training uh, with reading many books. But in reality, it wasn't just a university for getting knowledge, but it was like, you know, um, the last um, holiday of girls before marriage, you know. A pastor um, encouraged us, he was listening to us as, as if he were our father. Uh, dear sisters, if you have ever thought that you are not loved, that there is no any person in the world to listen to you. I, I, I can tell you that there is a pastor in our church who can, mm, who can listen to you, who can um, uh, listen to anything you, you want to say. Uh, here in that training, you will, he you will feel that you are you're loved. You have Father. Thank you. It's so interesting. I don't know if you noticed this. Do you see difference between testimonies um, of men and women? The men are speaking about the facts. Uh, uh, they are speaking about the facts, uh, the changes in women after the training. And uh, women who attended this uh, training say about emotions more than f about the facts. Um, uh, small critics, but many emotions and feelings. Do you see? They are inspired. Hello, my, na my name is Tatiana. Um, I want to tell you about my sufferers, sufferers, and you know, 
and uh, I was uh, sitting at the edge of this hall and the things Pastor said on the stage were flying th th were flying passing by me I, I didn't catch them I didn't hear them I didn't want to listen to them I didn't want to go to that um, training but I felt real happiness when I were at the training for women I was listening to to the uh, first leadership school several times eight times even and the first leadership school says uh, about uh, the things which can help you to become successful in all spheres of life even in family in personal relationships um, when I uh, attended this training I, I I died for myself I understood that I need to live for Jesus I we we cannot and uh, we shouldn't create a new bicycle you know because we have a um, perfect example you know, Pastor Boss and Pastor Sandy are not e idols for us, uh, but they are a good image um, for us to strive uh, to. You know, I attended many trainings, I attended many retreat trainings. Uh, uh, you know, at the first training, I was shocked that I need to express my thoughts shortly because women like to speak a lot. And at the women retreat training, I was shocked that I can speak a lot. Uh, you know, <laughs> I was allowed to speak as many as I can, and I ca I could write whatever I I thought. You know, at that training for women, I felt that I'm in the family. And you know, the main thing I understood is that we are not spectaculars. We are not uh, just an audience of this uh, play, but we are actors in the play. We are doers of the play. We cannot just listen to the testimonies on the stage, uh, uh, leaving this church after the sermon and doing own things. You know, I understood. Uh, I understood that I I was passive um, because of the post-Soviet Union uh, mentality because everything um, the party did uh, for us uh, and our brain uh, just died because uh, the Communist Party thought about people and we needed just to do everything with our thoughts but now we are to think families, health diseases, children, uh, problems, uh, you know, they were idle in my life. Um, you know, um, money also was idle for me. When I was running after them, they were disappearing, you know. So when I was running for my health, it disappeared. When I wanted to slim, I, I, I gained weight opposite and you know uh, when I thought about my child uh, you know and they betrayed me thanks uh, God that he exists and I ran to him and I said that God you're the only loyal you you are the only trustworthy and God said that you need to uh, learn English language and then go to the to the retreat training for women and listen to me I want to tell you that uh, that I attended also business retreat training which uh, taught me to uh, to think widely uh, to have broad mind I understood that all of us have some business fear all, all of us have some business um, calling and I found it in me in that training I understood that thank, uh, that uh, due to the reproaches due to the offenses and uh, fears uh, we cannot achieve success in our life the only person I 
I saw in training, it's Pastor Sunday. He was like a real father. He was listening to us patiently, not interrupting. He didn't judge us. He didn't rep reproach us in anything. I was crying out to him um, for all the years of my life. And uh, girls, after my um, testimonies came to me and said that you had so uh, difficult life uh, oh, and they embraced me, uh, they had, had me supporting me. And you know, uh, we can get, uh, we can, ha listen women, we have the power which can destroy our man. The way ladies, women have the power which can kill men. And at this training I understood that power. We need to lead this power. We need to direct this power to another way. We, we must be obedient. We must be new people, newborn people. We must be the image of Lord, the image of Jesus. He dis uh, Pastor Sandim destroyed all our fears the first fear is that uh, girls are unmarried they want to get married and that was the first marriage uh, can i reveal one truth pastor uh, pastor said oh no i don't think it's good it's good to reveal secrets here i want the women go to the retreat training so i want to tell you about truth, the truth um which i got uh, at the training i'm sure they are perfect I think that you flew away, please come back. <laughs> you know, I wrote a letter to Pastor Sande, I will read it now. So she now is reading about the, thi the same things she testified before. Uh, the last three years in our church were the happiest years in my life. I returned to Russia uh, to fulfill my mission there, but I'm happy to attend that training for women. You know, I'm ready to stay here for all the week, but not leave this church. After this training, I, I started shining. I'm not married, but I had problems with my father. I couldn't understand him. But after training, we have ideal atmosphere in our family. He now calls my mother princess. He calls me princess. And thanks to Pastor, I became a real princess after retreat training for women. Pastor Sandy showed me the ideal family. Earlier, I couldn't believe in this. Dear princesses, dear women, I appeal to you, I, I beg you to go to that training. It's not so difficult to write a test paper. Um, you know, it's a, the greatest blessing to get to that training for women. Thank you. Wave your hand if you haven't attended any retreat training with Pastor Sunday. Wave your hand if you have not attended any training, retreat training with Pastor Sandy. Wave your hand if you have not visited, have not attended training with Pastor Sandy. What should I do with them, Sveta? Okay, if you have not attended, then write down the information. Man, listen, the Training for men of the first level will be at the end of October. Men, are you here? We are waiting for you. The classical training of the first level will be from the 24th till 28th of October. It's classical retreat training, not for men or not for women. It's just classical training for all people, all kinds of social layers. So... Uh, it's the basic retreat training. It's cla classical retreat training is basic retreat training for all members of the church. It will be from 24th till 28th of uh, November. So all those who want to get to Pastor Sandy's home group, please uh, rush to this training. Despite the trainings for men and women where there are trainings for teenagers for married couples for those who want to know how uh, evangelize and those who want to know their callings 
for healing, etc. There are many kinds of retreat trainings. You can sign up to the retreat training at the end of the hall. There is a table for you. I would like to testify about my life and I want to praise the Lord for His defense. Uh, you know, um, this week um, a car could run, uh, run over me and the car nearly killed me t this week and thanks God he saved me and uh, I had just some small uh, problem with my brain but now it's everything is okay. Hello dear church, my name is Tamara, I'm, f I'm from uh, the power of uh, Joy Church, Pastor Lesem, uh, the church is called the Power of Joy. I would like to testify that I'm with God more than one year, but I had many adventures uh, during this year. Um, a year ago, I was healed from cancer, and I want to glorify the Lord. I want to praise Him. Praise Him. So I, um, I had many troubles in my family, and uh, I cried out to Pastor Lesiam about all my problems. Uh, but when I came to God, uh, He said to me that I can solve all your problems if you if you go to me. And I wasn't afraid of uh, making decision. Um, um, uh, and I made decision uh, uh, to go to pastor. And God said to me after this, uh, please remember everything pastor said to you. My um, my husband is an addict, and I was afraid of him, and I couldn't uh, do anything with him. I invited pastor to talk to my husband, who is an addict, and uh, I was afraid of this meeting because uh, he was totally drunk. And you know, I want to praise the Lord when Pastor came, he was ready to go to the rehabilitation center. He agreed without words, even without saying anything. My husband went to the rehabilitation center without any scandals, without uh, reproaches, uh, fences, uh, just because I gave all the situation to the Lord. I trusted God. And you know, I couldn't believe my eyes that my husband was so obedient. Um, I couldn't believe, I couldn't imagine that he will agree to go to the rehabilitation center. You know, when God says to you, you need just to accept the, his word and act according to it. If I, I, if I didn't um, believe God, uh, if I didn't believe God's words, um, I don't know what can happen after with my husband. I'm thankful to Valera, thanks to church. Th thanks God that you, you do miracles. God says to me now, that if some of you in the hall or here, you have some problem with um, uh, an eye, you have some rotting in your eye, uh, put your finger on your eye, or you, uh, the, another person who has problem, um, has problem with a shoulder, also put your hand onto your shoulder, God will heal you now. I, so there is hernia. So those who have a hernia on the near near the leg, please put your hand too. If you have a problem with uh, with a bald uh, head, put your hand onto your bald head. A problem with eyesight, 
also God will heal you. So you have some wounds in your mouth inside. Uh, there is a person with wounds inside of mouth. Also put your hand onto your lips. A man who has uh, problems uh, with impotence. He, uh, God, uh, we will now pray to you. And uh, God, please walk through these aisles and touch every person and strengthen all weak people and get away all these diseases we cast down all the diseases problem with the right shoulder we tell you to go away we pro we proclaim the health of the shoulder i proclaim good sight we uh, pray for a man with a problem on the arm armpit and we cast down all them skin problems in the name of jesus may god your power walk through the aisles and strengthen each of them restore every person's body the wounds in the mouth we uh, tell you to get away in the name of jesus all the cuffs all the colds we order you to get away and we proclaim the healing now god thank you that you touch every person now thank you for your goodwill that you are among us in presence in the name of jesus all glory be to you amen i see i see our brothers uh, gypsy gypsies uh, do you don't you know uh, for whom i was praying two weeks ago uh, w was he your brother uh, w w what is his health now how is he now is he alive yes he's alive and his heart now is okay he had a heart attack wow god is alive I will now tell you briefly about the situation I was praying. Pastor, uh, Pastor Zoltan, is Pastor Zoltan here? No, he's not here today. Uh, uh, someone called me and um, it was at, mid at midnight. Uh, the call was at midnight. Uh, there is a brother, Gypsy. There, and he has a, a bad problem in family. He he's a very young man, 20 years old. He has a problem with heart, a disease of heart. And even doctors in Ukraine refuse to make operation. And they say that he he's going to die very soon. And uh, all doctors refused and all surgeons refused to deal with him but uh, uh, later um, people said to him that there is some doctor in Russia uh, who can make an operation but he doesn't give any guarantee that he will survive it's a risk to make this operation and they said that we believe in God and we want that Pastor Sandy will pray for our brother and at 7 a.m. in the morning they came to me uh, we met in the morning, we prayed for him, and doctors now say that the heart is uh, restoring now. Isn't it a, mis a miracle? So stick to God minister to him and may your family uh, serve to God and we will see the glory of God in your family. Anointing service topic through worship of God. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth for the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. John 4.24 Why does God seek people who would worship him in spirit and in truth? Why does God 
presented to us as our duty to worship him in, in this particular way. Let us read the message from Apostle Paul. Do you no, not know that to whom you yield yourself as slaves for obedience, you are slaves for, to him who you obey, whether it is of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness? Romans 16. It is not in vain that the Lord expects us to worship and serve him with praise. Whatever you give yourself up to, whatever you honor, whatever you dedicate most of your time to is the object of your worship. Whom you worship shows who your God actually is and so defines your destiny, whether you are going to be a slave of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness. We can call ourselves believers, Christians, because we go to church of Sundays, on Sundays. However, in reality, it's not our attending church that defines who we are, but what we do in everyday life. We spend most of our time taking care of our parents, watching TV, chatting on the phone, or attending the house. Then these are the gods we have given ourselves to as slaves. In this case, our lords are vanity, friends, ego, or image, idleness, or an inactive, irresponsible life. Whoever we dedicate our thoughts, heart, time, and longings to, whether it is a person or thing or our desire, shows our real Lord, and that in turn reveals the essence of man. Whatever we spend a lot of time on shows who owns our heart. We give years, days, hours of our life to whatever or whoever we honor. It has power and influence over us. We work for God, meditating on Him, spend much time seeking His face, His voice, His will and desire. Then we can say that it is He who is the master of our life. It is natural because we are drawn to whatever we love. We want to spend more time with the person we love, do some interesting and important work, or alternatively wear the sofa into halls watching endless soap operas and shows. You can also define who your master is by analyzing your thoughts at the moment when you feel like relaxing and having some rest. If at this point uh, you exclude God, then evidently he is not the master of your life. The life of David is a bright example to the true meaning of worshiping God. David constantly sang to God, glorified and praised Him. Take any psalm and you will see that this man knew God. He dil diligently brought the sacrifice of praise and glorified the name of the Lord. When we honor something, we, s we serve it out of a pure heart and are ready for any sacrifices. Let us remember the story of Abel and Cain, Genesis chapter 4. Abel brought a sacrifice with an open, sincere heart, with reverence and thrill. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, Hebrew 11.4. Abel showed his sincere honor to God through the quality of his sacrifice. Cain made a sacrifice superficially, not from the bottom of his heart. He did not take it seriously. That is why God accepted Abel's sacrifice, not Cain's. This is when it became obvious that Cain never knew God. God wants us to worship Him with all our lives, all our works, so that He would be our priority and number one. Another example is Daniel. As we know, the king made a decree that if anyone asked a petition of any god or man, Daniel 6-7, except from the king Darius, they would be thrown to the pit with lions. Daniel courageously demonstrated his priorities, declaring whom he served, celebrated and honored. He opened all the windows, knelt down demonstratively and started to pray to his God and to give him praise. He showed that he saw no life without God, that he was ready to risk and even lose everything. This is the manifestation of gratitude, worship and honor. You can see that Daniel could easily sacrifice for God's sake. In the same way, Esther was ready to sacrifice her comfort, even her life for the sake of a whole nation and fulfillment of God's will. 
one can define their lord and whom they serve by the kind of choices they make. Unfortunately, there are people who choose sinful habits, lack of desire to change and develop benefits, position or status over God. Let us see a couple of such examples. Samson. He was a man of great calling, but he preferred lust and adultery. Judges 18. He did not choose obedience to God and was trapped in the nets of cunning Deliah. God was not his image of worship. His image of worship was lustfulness, desire to satisfy himself. He sacrificed God and perished. Another negative example is Absalom who made his ego the desire to be successful and career his first priorities. Because of these ambitious strivings, he broke God's commandments. He stood against his father simply because he wanted to be the king. The Lord of his life was a desire for an honorable position, vanity and deep love for himself, and not a desire to please God. Judas, chosen by Jesus to be one of his twelve closest followers. First, he followed his teacher and worked hard for his Lord, but in the end he led an unclean spirit into his heart, which brought him to the point of betrayal and death. For the sake of lust, passion, gain, etc., Judas sacrificed God. Each of us individually makes a decision and makes a choice about which God to serve. With whom do you spend your free time? To whom do you pay your attention? What kind of sacrifice and what heart do you bring to the altar? What do you do every day? Let the answers to these questions always be beneficial to God. Only this way we can demonstrate our gratitude and give honor to the one who is worthy all praise. This is sincere and true worship. May it be in our lives. Let us show our life and gratitude to God by worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. For a more thorough study of this topic, we recommend you read the following books. Grateful Heart, God's Ambush Against Your Enemies, Bearers of God's Present, We Great in the Eyes of God by Sandy Adelaide. May the Lord bless you and your family. With love and prayers for you, Senior Pastor of the Embassy of Blessed Kingdom of God for All Nations, Sandy Adelaide. Pastor. Uh, I want to announce uh, on the 7th of October there will be the trial and all the church has to take fast and pray for Pastor Sunday on the 7th of October. Thank you. Hello church. Once more. God, we thank you for this day. Please speak to us. Not through flesh and blood, not through people, not through human being, but you, Holy Spirit, three, speak through a person, through a human being. God, reveal your will. May us hear your voice in the name of Jesus. Amen. The worship in truth and in open heart. This month we need to worship God. This month we need to dedicate to the worship. And Bible says that God is searching for only those worshipers who worship Him in spirit and in love and in truth. So it was a revolutionary um, declaration of uh, Jesus Christ because uh, people um, worshipped on the tops and uh, earlier people needed to go to Jerusalem and they needed to go to the top of the mount and worship him some several times a year. Do you remember, uh, do you remember the example of uh, the mother of Samuel? All his family went to the top of the mount to the temple to pray and they were waiting for a child and to worship God, they needed some some ceremonies, customs. And the same way we are thinking now, people are searching for customs and traditions. For example, we think uh, that worship God 
it should be connected with music, but it's not right. It's a bad stereotype. It's just tradition. It's a, stere it's a stereotype. It's like a dogma, but it's not true. The truth is that the main uh, to what God is looking is that we, when we are worshiping Him in truth, and in truth and in love, He He sees our heart when we are worshiping. Two things we must notice and observe while we are worshiping. If I ask you what worship means, uh, and tell me two things which are included into this process, what will you reply? You will say music, uh, you will say some band, um, sermon, uh, or church. No, but God pays attention not to the music, and maybe worship cannot be connected with music at all. It cannot be sometimes connected with the church, with gatherings, with sermons, or with a group, or with a band on the stage. The worship, the worshiping, is the lifestyle. Uh, how can we make a worship our lifestyle? Is the topic we are going to speak today. When we are speaking about the month of worshiping of God, it means we will be speaking about how to walk in worshiping, how to live uh, with worship in heart. The truth it means that we are worshiping, we imagine God as if He are alive and He is standing beside us as if we are making everything, we are singing to Him. This is the, the worship in truth. And the second paragraph of your papers has the place from Romans 6.16. Uh, Holy Spirit says to me that you have a problem with your heart. There is a hole in your heart. Please raise your hand. We now release the healing of God. And just right now we're praying and we proclaim the healing in the name of Jesus. In Romans 6.16 it is written, Do you not know that to whom you yield yourself as slaves for obedience? It means, to, uh, it means what you are listening to is the thing you worship and it means that you are slaves of what you're listening um, do you understand me or not let I, I need two people to explain this two or three people okay okay I need now two more people I need four people in total for example For example, you will be an image of righteous person. You are the image of righteousness. Uh, stand there, please. You are the image of sin. You are not, you don't look like sin, but anyway, you will be an image of sin. Uh, you together. Okay, you will be not sin, but you will be vanity, image of vanity, something empty. And you, um, you are the person in vanity, and uh, you are the person who stretches to vanity, and you are the person who stretches to righteousness. For example, this is not a scene. Uh, this is work. Vanity is the uh, means work. Uh, we uh, to what we allocate uh, much time to what we uh, share our um, priorities. It's the um, things to what we to what we pay attention more than to other things. Vanity is that what we do more than other things. 
and it is written, do you not know that to whom you yield yourself as slaves for obedience, for example, uh, if you always choose your work, it means that this, uh, you are the slave of work. For example, flesh, uh, desires, comfort, um, some ego, desires, other things. It's all vanity and you um, independently uh, give all these things to the vanity. It means that you are a slave of the vanity. To what we give our obedience to that thing, we are slaves. For example, we care about our flesh, uh, care about comfort, uh, entertainment, relax, etc. So these things do not please God. And everything which is disconnected with God's will, everything which is not connected with, with God, and it means that you are a slave of what you are doing. For example, if you do more work, you are a slave of work. So you are the slave of entertainment and you are a slave of some pleasures and you are the slave of, uh, of a sin. Even if you go to the church every Sunday, every Thursday, or every every day you go to the church and you praise God and you clap, by this, it, it doesn't mean that you minister to God, that you are His follower and worshiper. What defines whether you are a follower or a worshiper is your everyday choice. It is your everyday choice. That's much stronger than what you do every once once a week or two times a week our way of life our everyday choice what we offer uh, what we honor what what cho choice do we make for sake of what we are living and working what is our priority in our life what is it is something that is a, a cornerstone this is our god this is our Lord and this is the one whom we are ministering and if we take the opposite situation if this is opposite for instance you're always do the right choice when you get up in the morning you say oh Lord I want to please you today Lord, how can I find a way to please you? I, I want to, I want to find system methods and thoughts on how to praise God. Uh, any ideas on how can I praise the Lord through my work, not just to earn money for, for myself, but how can I reveal God through earning money? So this is my priority when I think all the time how should I how, how can I please him it is not just not smoking not drinking uh, not having adultery but worshiping it is it is what you obey it is when you think how to please him when you think how to surrender yourself to someone when you think how to please him how to accomplish his will if he tells me to love people then i should think how to love people because i want to please him i want to praise him if he says do good for someone else i i then should seek the ways to do good for other people so for instance she is she is god and i should look for what would she be pleased with you are looking for the ways of pleasing her all the time. So it means that you are the slave of righteousness. You are the minister of righteousness and you are the worshiper of God. Even if you don't go to church every Sunday, even if you don't sing in the, in the choir, and even if you don't do some things for the church, but if by the whole life you seek for His will, 
uh, in order to worship him and please him you are the worshiper in the spirit and truth you are worshiper not in your deeds but in the way of life so he is looking for worshipers in the way of life in the lifestyle and from that abundance we sing and praise and clap but before this should be our lifestyle our choice we, we should show him that he is our priority he is our desire he is what we want we make ourselves his slaves by our own will and then we can sing and do something else and this is additional this is expression of what we have inside but the real worship is our daily choice it is our lifestyle this is kind of person on, and worshippers whom God is seeking those who worship to him in spirit and truth at the same uh, chapter Romans 6 16 God God doesn't doesn't expect uh, simply worshiping uh, worshiping him uh, with praise what we what we honor what we dedicate ourselves to in the greater part the greater part of our time it is the object it is the object of worshiping so the one whom we are worshiping if he says this if he tells this so the o the object where we share the most of our time shows the object of our worshiping and the object of our worshiping defines our destiny there are two uh, three sequences sequences something that we give ourselves to is the one that we honor whom we obey is the one whom we honor to whom we surrender ourselves every day the one we are uh, honor because you give, give yourself to the one whom you honor or respect for instance there was a pregnant uh, sister she said she saw her husband after after men's retreat and she saw his changes she didn't have time to write uh, homework and in spite she was pregnant and she was uh, on the ninth month and she was about uh, to deliver soon but because she honors she respects her husband she respects family and this is this is her priority and in not in the for sake of making her family better she in spite all these circumstances was obedient to husband and went to women's retreat what am i talking about if we give ourselves in obedience to something it means that we honor this she did this because she honors husband uh, she said uh, i went there by recommendation of my husband so if you do this voluntarily then you honor this i have heard that some people some young people from our church every sunday after ministry for instance today after ministry they mainly call one another and say look let us go to the cinema after ministry this is what people seek themselves they uh, give them give themselves to cinema some entertainment barbecue every time what does it say about to me it says that entertainment and uh, some satisfaction com comfort self-seeking 
I'm God and I like companies, I, got, I like entertainment. This is what you surrender yourself to. And it means that you are the slave of the comfort, you are the slave of satisfaction. And other people, after such a ministry like anointing service, they go to they go to families, they go to to write home assignments or listen to sermons or study or work. So whatever you give yourself to is the object of your worshipping. Those who went to retreat or doing home assignment, this is what they honor. What we give ourselves ourselves to obedience is what we honor. You may say one thing or another thing. We usually say one thing but do another thing. But uh, the truth is that if you want to know what you are worshiping to or what you what you honor, check what choice do what choice do you make. So this is just the first uh, point in this chapter that you should mention. So the next consequence uh, or the next truth that you should pay attention to. If we have defined the object of our worshipping or object of our honor, the second truth This person or this object whom we honor is the object of our worshipping. The one whom we honor to this object we are worshipping. Am I right? So what you worship, what you honor is the object of your worshipping. For instance, now he says, I don't, uh, I don't worship satisfa satisfactions or cinema. No, you don't go to cinema, but you go to McDonald's, or you may not go to McDonald's, but you will go to chat with your friends, because this is the thing that you worship anyway. Why do we know it? Because this is the this is the same the same area. Uh, self-satisfaction and self-comfort. If you surrender yourself to these things, then the object of your worshipping is is not God. Even if you sing here in the choir, you actually worship to to satisfaction or to opinion of other people. The object of your worshipping is not God. Even if you are here on the stage, the object of your worshipping is the the object that you choose and what you choose is what you honor and what you honor is the object of your worshipping and now the second and the third truth and now the one whom you are worshipping to defines your destiny it is the second second it is the third par part of chain First, uh, first part is the one whom we surrender ourselves to is the one whom we honor, and the one the one whom we honor is the object of our worshiping. It is the object of our worshiping, and the ob object of our worshiping, the thing that we worship to defines our destiny. If you always watch TV shows, you will always, uh, you will become the same depressive uh, and the same kind of person that they show on, on the TV show. I'm so miserable oh, and different stuff. You will, be, you will become the way they show you on the TV. So you will become the way they show you on the TV or 
the way the object of worshipping is. <coughs> So we give ourselves to the one whom we honor. We honor this object. The second, if we honor something, it means that we not only honor this, no, we worship to this thing. And the object of our worshiping You may think that that doesn't affect me, but no, it defines your destiny. It is important who our friends are, who we spend our time with, what are we talking about, whom do we give the, the major uh, part of our time, what do we listen to. So everything we surrender ourselves, what is our choices? When sister says, that we don't want to quit retreat, we want to live in the retreat all the time. What does it say about their life was changed? Why? They honored it, they surrendered themselves to it, and this retreat defines destiny, defines their destiny. But when we say, uh, I have family, I have work, you become slaves. You became, become slaves of your problems, you become slaves of your work. Most of us, we surrender ourselves to the problem, to problems. And we don't, don't actually mention and notice that we honor these problems. And if we honor these problems, then we become slaves of these problems. We say, no, I am not slaves, I am not slave, this is just my problem. I will quit soon. No, you will not quit. You share much time to this problem if you give a lot of time to such a problem you become a slave of this problem moreover you worship it you may say i hate this problem i want to quit no but because you speak about this all the time by this same thing you worship to the, to this problem if you speak about this all the time and if you hate it but when you speak and you when you speak and you think about it, it means that you worship to this. It means that you honor and worship. And if if it is so, then uh, this problem it uh, makes your destiny and defines your destiny. Thank you very much. Is that clear to you? Now I want someone from the hall. Who of you understands what is the sincere worship? and what it means for you. What have you understood from this sermon and what I was talking right now? A couple of people come to me right now. This is just in a couple of words. This is one passage from what I was going to tell you. This is just a small passage, one sentence. So church, you should, sh you should study and read all the studies in order to understand much more. After we have started holding the trainings for men, now only men are going to testify on the stage. I understood that the true worship of God is what I do more and what I do sincerely. Um, I, indeed, uh, you know, I live by the things I'm speaking about because every day I'm, I'm thinking of God, I do my best to glorify His name. Uh, I work for God, I, I sleep for God, I do everything only for God. Because with this I glorify Him, and this all lives in my heart. To what I share more time, to what I allocate more time is my Lord. Good. Terrific. Give applause to Him.
Hello, church.、Uh, when I came to go to God, I I felt that I became a newborn. When I was sleeping, my my spirit was singing. I didn't feel any pain in my body. You know, I I felt even physically the spirit in me. I I read Bible with pleasure. Well, wherever I was walking, I saw God in everything, in some ants, in people, in things. And. And now I want to say about the things、uh, which Pastor Sander has mentioned. You know, after a while, after some years, you go to church, you you pray. I now noticed that I started、uh, to pray less, in, and、uh, my prayers are not in that spirit which was before. You know,、uh, now in、uh, my home group, we are speaking not about God, but more about our problems. But God says that we need to pray more about people who are dying around. It means now I understand that we were worshiping our problems, our diseases. You know, when you are praying for a long time for your disease,、um, you then、uh, give up after you haven't seen any changes. Then you become obedient to the problem, and you become a slave of your disease. But we need to to be standing on our prayers. And you know when I'm、uh, working, I'm glorifying the name of God, and God、uh, and God heals people at work, and it, it means、uh, that I worship to God.、Uh, that's good example. Thank you very much. I understood that worship,、uh, worshiping、uh, God, is the state of heart and the state of your thoughts. The things you are thinking more about,、um, the things you, you are dreaming about more, are you, your lords, your gods. So if you don't think more of God. But more of things, of entertainments, of vanity.、Mm, it means that you don't worship God. All all three people testified and explained their understanding perfectly. Give applause to them. If you pay attention to the papers you have been handed out, there are three examples. One example is good, and、uh, three three other examples are bad. I mean,、uh, of bad of bad people. Give me three good examples. Daniel. The first good example is David. So the first good example was David. David. Second good example is Daniel, and the third good example was Esther. And now I have a question to you. And after I have asked the question, you need to go and to explain、uh, my word. Three people from each se- sector must go to the stage t- to answer. You need to tell me how David ensures, how David shows that he is a real, true worshiper of God. You need to explain why David is a true worshiper of God. That it's God to whom he worship. How we can see these examples in David's life. The same question is about Daniel. How, through what samples, can we see that Daniel is a real, true worshiper of God? 
and the third is star. So uh, you, I see the same faces. Don't go if you have already answered on the stage. So you need to give examples how the to these three people are examples of good worshippers. People are not moving. What's happened? I'm shocked. People are nailed down to their seats. Oh. Oh, gentlemen stood up not not to go to the stage, but to some another place. <laughs> oh my God, you haven't understood anything. Oh my God, you you haven't listened to me at all. Are you going to the stage? Are you going to the stage? You, you, you just rush then. Why are you just walking as if you are in the park? So I need three people, right? So is there a microphone? Okay, take it. Now please repeat my question first and then answer uh, to him secondly. I would like to tell you about Esther. Firstly, uh, repeat the question and then give the answer. Esther. Okay, I understand. Now you... Esther has sacrificed sacrificed uh, with all she had she honored God with all her heart she didn't pay attention to what can happen with her she totally followed God for the sake of people to save people but it's all good but I I want to hear three points I have mentioned so, have you understood what I said? Okay, let them speak first, and then you will continue. Uh, first of all, repeat my question. Uh, first of all, repeat my question, which I asked before, and then explain, please. Uh, th according to the three points I have given before, please uh, explain how these three people can be a an example for us in worshiping. I would like to explain uh, the first question is yes, uh, how David uh, uh, showed, displayed that she, he is a worshipper of God. What are the three points I have dictated to you before? Okay, I don't remember. Oh, you don't remember. Maybe you remember. You don't remember too. Oh my God. Our task is to explain why David, Daniel, and Esther were great people in the eyes of God. Why are they uh, good worshippers of God? Yes, um, approximately you have repeated the question correctly, but not, not absolutely. Okay, keep standing. I keep standing uh, on the stage. You, you see how you are attentive listeners, how you listen attentively. Maybe some of you uh, understood. Maybe people in the hall understood. For half an hour, I was explaining to you the three points, why we must be and how we must be worshippers of God, and now no one understood. Now the women decided to save men. So who will start? Hello. I'll repeat my question, please. And on the examples of those three heroes, uh, explain the three points I have explained uh, before. There were three points. The first point, whom uh, you worship. The first point is your priority in life. The second point, uh, if you choose uh, the thing as a priority, then you worship this thing. And the third point, um, you are a slave of the thing you worship. Um, is it right? No, it's not really very correct. Who can tell me exactly about the points I have dictated before? Hello. Um, I'm from, from Russia, Sakhalin uh, Island. Oh, people from Russia are very good. 
nice speakers. Oh, where we, where have you gone to? Oh, you should keep standing on the stage. Who said to you to leave the stage? Pasta has said about three truths. Truth number one is yes, the things we dedicate our lives more to. Second, um, to set an example for the first point is vanity, the rest, uh, cinemas, etc. Uh, the truth number two is about to what we worship, we honor work, children, family, blah, blah, blah. Number three, the things we honor identifies our destiny. The things we worship identify our destiny, our fate. The true worship is our lifestyle. It's the way we live every day. You know, you know, it's worth coming from Russia to to understand everything so correctly. So applaud to her because people in Ukraine cannot understand so correctly as she understands because we we think superficially. So you. So you have said everything correctly. Now you please. I understood three things. You said that that worshiping must be the way of your life. Uh, for example, you get up in the morning and you think of God as, at once. For example, David, when he woke up, he thought first about God. And three points. Um, the first truth, uh, the things I'm, I honor more. The second point is uh, the things I honor more are like cafes, sport, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're just reading a con uh, your notes. It's not fair. You need to deliver everything. You need to, do, to recite everything you understood. It's the wrong way to, to speak. Okay, let's return to person uh, from Russia. Can you help me uh, with examples uh, on three people? Yes, all these three people are examples of good worshippers. On the example of David, we see that he worshiped God always in difficulties, in troubles, in joy, in uh, the peak of his glory, in persecutions. He always worshiped God even uh, when he was suffered or rejoiced. He worshiped God every day. That's a very good answer. Now listen to me, church. The first point I have said, there are, I have mentioned that there, there are three chains. There are three chain points. Three truths were, which are connected in one chain. There are three consequential things. For example, the first is our choice. Um, for example, we choose to um, dedicate uh, one's, uh, one's life to the vanity, another one uh, dedicated his or her life to the righteousness. And our choice identifies uh, what we honor and to what we are obedient. Our choice determines what we honor, determines to what we live for, to what we are obedient. This is the first point. Our choice identifies, determines our honor. Do you understand me? Are you here? So the first point is our choice of honor. The, the second truth is the things we honor, we worship. The if, we wor if we honor some things, we worship them. Oh, it's hobby. Oh, it's sport. Or oh, it's not the main for me. But if you share, if you allocate more time to that thing, that it it means that you honor this thing. And the third point is that the thing we choose, we honor, we worship and all things then 
identify our fate. And now I ask you, please prove me that these three people, David, Daniel, and Esther, are real worshippers of God, how, uh, how their worshipping is revealed in their lives. All three people, all three hearers from Bible we know, they honored God, that's why they worshipped Him, that's why they always choose, choose God, and that, that's why they had good fate, good destiny. Thank you, very nice. Thanks God, I also want to explain these three people. Repeat me, please, all the three truths I have mentioned before. Oh, no, yes. You, do you now understand how are we are good listeners? We are bad listeners. That's why I pay attention uh, on retreat trainings. Do you now understand why I don't go to preach in churches? Just because it's useless to preach in churches. It, and you... You try to uh, put your heart out of your flesh to explain the things and then you um, find out that no one understood anything. That's why I do these things during the retreat trainings because during the retreat trainings you write test papers, then I check them and uh, then I see if you understood me correctly. Now repeat please the three truths. Oh, if you don't remember, please l I'll give the microphone to another person. So, double num point number two. The first truth is, uh, th this is about our choice and our priority. The second point is the things we honor, we worship to. And the third is the things we worship, uh, create and determine our fate. Yeah, in nearly it's the same I have said. But nearly, approximately, means it's not very exactly. I would like to uh, explain uh, uh, how I understood uh, the wor uh, real worshiper topic on the example of three people. David uh, honored God. He prayed to, to God three times a day. He made a decision to honor God. Second point, and he uh, worshiped God by prayers, by uh, teaching disciples. The third point of his priority um, was that uh, despite of good uh, situations or bad situations, he went after God and God de determined his fate, his destiny through this loyalty in bad or good conditions. Now please set an example of your life. Uh, you know, um, everywhere I am, anywhere I am, wherever I am, I glorify God. I raised my child uh, speaking about God. I said to my child that God is our foundation. And uh, if something happens, uh, he, my child says to a teacher at school that everything comes from God. It's the same time uh, when I'm at work, I have uh, business cards. Um, all business cards, uh, my business cards have the prayer at the back and I have um, handed out thousands of my business cards and uh, you know if only one person re repented sins and received Jesus through 1000 of my business cards, uh, thanks God, then it wasn't vain. Three points. The first tr uh, truth is uh, to what you worship, the second uh, what you honor, to what you sh allocate time, mm. um, and the, the, the things you, um, uh, you honor more, uh, you are a slave to them. 
and then uh, the things you worship uh, uh, determine your fate. For example, if I live only by the disease of my son, if, for example, he's a drug addict, if I think only about him, about his addiction, it means that I'm a slave of this problem. But if I think of other, uh, I think of other people's problems, it means I'm, I worship uh, God and uh, I'm a real worshiper. Three points. The first, uh, my choice. Uh, for example, when I choose uh, to how to spend my time. Second, the one whom I worship. If I if I do it constantly. Whether I want it or not, I do it all the time. And the third defines my destiny. And who am I? And if you take an example of David, he chose to spend time with God. To s he chose to pray God, to minister to God, to do what the Word says. And uh, his uh, stability and being constant in this defined it, uh, defined his uh, destiny. That was his choice, because he spent time with God all the time. And the third, this defined his uh, destiny. He was worshiper and prophet of the Lord. Three truths. What we give ourselves to is what we honor. Second, what we honor is the object of our worshiping. And the third is the object of our worshiping defines our destiny. Well done. Your brain is turned on. And uh, on example of Esther. I studied her story closely and it says that Artaxerxes three times, for three times, the king uh, offered her kingdom for three times. When, when she had to save uh, the people of uh, no, her, her people, people of Israel. In the book of Esther, she invited king. You said he, king uh, offered her king offered her a kingdom. <laughs> ah, you told about this in such a way that I, I thought that you have read another book, another story. But uh, Esther had priority. She knew what she had to do. She has to save God's people. Um, and uh, this purpose, she had priority to minister to God because she had a good, uh, good mentor, Mardukei. And David, he was a spiritual man, and he didn't give, he didn't respond evil for evil. In spite, he he always was prosecuted. And uh, for every evil that was made to him, he did something good. And he showed that he will not uh, give back uh, evil because he ministered to God, he worshipped God. Uh, by this saying that he was worshipping God. And the example of Daniel is that he wasn't afraid of king's order that that was supposed to deprive him of life. So he put God on the first place because he, uh, he wanted to show that he worships him. Three truths that were mentioned is what you think and what you share time to and what you do It will define your destiny, but something is wrong. What is your name, Igor? Igor, you have done your job well, but you have jumped over. Okay, continue. If you take an example of David, he was thinking of God, of of the Lord, and voluntarily uh, dedicated his life to Him, 
and praised him. So, for instance, when there was uh, an episode of Goliath, okay, it, it has defined his definite, uh, destiny. Next point. We, wor we, work, we work in a team, so I will continue. <laughs> So three points. Look, in the beginning, it it starts with thoughts. What am I think of? Then it defines my actions. What am I doing? This defines my destiny. And three our heroes, Daniel. That's okay. Listen to me. Listen. It's obvious that you work in a team. <laughs> You're a team for sure. So everything begins in our thoughts, then we begin to then it, it leads to action, then our action leads to destiny. You have probably been to anointing service last time. I I tell you that you were there. I see it. And three points with Esther. Esther, she saved her people. She ministered to God and when the moment came when she had to do something, she didn't think a lot. She went and saved her nation and she became an uh, extraordinary person. And then Daniel, when he had to go to Lyons, uh, uh, he just went there and he wasn't asking a lot of question uh, a lot of questions and he he was just obedient and when there was a moment when he had to uh, commit his destiny and him commit his uh, calling he just went there and uh, this affected his destiny and when David went to fight Goliath uh, when people said uh, you cannot do it, but he 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 thought that I live by God, I do everything for God, and when the when there came moment to uh, rule his destiny, he said, "Who is this man Goliath? I will go and kill him because uh, he was doing this all the time. Like he he was obedient, and that was not difficult for him to make." Uh, that was not difficult for him to become one of the most uh, extraordinary per uh, personalities in the Bible. And God says that he is the man after my heart. Good job, guys. Igor and Anton. Applause to them. They tried so hard. So what should I tell you now? Do you understand why have I... Why have I started to? Uh, why have I started the retreat movement? That's what am I working uh, on at our home groups because people uh, often live in delusion that they go to church and they know everything. We don't know anything, and what we have seen right now can uh, give a heart attack to every pastor. It, it is it is difficult it, it, because most pastors they think that people always that people know and understand what pastor has uh, preached about. But when you when you look at it closer, you understand. You, you may notice that life of these people hasn't changed. Why? Because we listen not attentively. I will ask you another. I would ask you another question, but. I, I will not risk because the next question I wanted to ask why worshiping and pra why praise and, uh, praise and worshiping is not uh, is not necessarily has to be in the church but <laughs> I don't want to make a theater and comedy of it so read your notes and let us take our bread and uh, wine At least those who came out 
you have done your great job because others stayed uh, at their seats. Let us say great job to those who came out to stage. You are, you are the best because you, rev you have uh, showed your courage and risked to come out and speak. Those who were sitting there worse because they stayed at their seats, but you were trying. Well done. I think that they have done a great job. Okay. Does everybody have bread and juice? Lord, we want to be like you. We want to worship you. We want to worship you all the time. By our deeds, by our way of life, by our choice, every day. We want to honor you. We want to worship you. And we want that our destiny would go only from you. So now, Lord, we honor and we worship you and we humble ourselves before you. And we make decision to make you our priority number one in our life. Be, Lord, our head over us. Be our master in all our daily routine that vanity wouldn't, wouldn't, man, uh, wouldn't manage us, that we wouldn't become slaves of this uh, daily routine, but help us to minister to you and bless this bread and bless this wine, sanctify it and use it in order for us to be more like you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Receive it by faith. If someone needs healing or breakthrough, receive it by faith that when you receive this bread and wine, your healing and your breakthrough will come.